Our top focus at this hour, in Israel, all efforts to stabilize the fragile coalition have now proven futile. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett and Foreign Minister Yair Lapid have agreed to dissolve the Knesset. The announcement will give power to Foreign Minister Yair Lapid in days and force new elections. One year ago, Bennett and Lapid forged an ideologically disparate alliance. The coalition temporarily ushered Israel out on an unprecedented era of a political gridlock. But with a series of defections, Bennett is set to support a bill to dissolve parliament. The fall of the coalition will trigger a fifth election in less than four years. However, there is no guarantee of a viable new administration. Until new elections can be held, Bennett will step aside to be replaced by Yapid, who will serve as the interim prime minister. Israeli newspapers reported new elections would be held on October 25th. The move means that Lapid is now poised to host U.S. President Joe Biden, who was due to visit Israel in July. לא חסכנו במאמצים על מנת לגייס את מי שנדרש כדי להעביר את התקנות, אבל לצערי מאמצינו לא נשאו פרי. על כן, ידידי, שר החוץ יאיר לפיד ואני החלטנו לפעול יחד לפיזור הכנסת ולקביעת בחירות במועד מוסכם. Lapid thanked Bennett for putting the country before his personal interests, but also said that the inability of the coalition to survive indicated that Israel is in need of serious change. Lapid said that he would not wait until new elections to begin tackling challenges that the country faced. לפני שנה התחלנו יחד את התיקון הזה, אנחנו ממשיכים בו עכשיו וממשיכים יחד. גם אם יוצאים לבחירות בעוד כמה חודשים, האתגרים שלנו כמדינה לא יכולים לחכות. אנחנו צריכים לטפל ביוקר המחיה, לנהל את המאבק באיראן, בחמאס ובחיזבאללה, להתייצב מול הכוחות שמאיימים להפוך את ישראל למדינה לא דמוקרטית. The opposition leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, hailed the end of what he called the worst government in Israel's history. Netanyahu is on trial over corruption charges that he denies. The veteran right-winger has pledged to form what he calls a strong and stable government of right-wingers. Twelve months ago, the unlikely coalition of opposites had ended former Prime Minister Netanyahu's record 12-year rule. <laughs> אני חושב שהרוחות השתנו, אני מרגיש את זה. אני שומע את האנשים, אתה הולך לדבר עם אימהות ועם אבות, עם זוגות צעירים, עם ילדים, עם אנשים יותר מבוגרים, וחלק מהם הם אנשים שלא הצביעו בשבילו. והם אומרים, אנחנו, אנחנו רוצים עכשיו את השינוי האמיתי. אנחנו רוצים שנחזיר את מדינת ישראל למקום הראוי לה. ואני מתכוון לעשות את זה יחד עם חבריי. And for more details on what this means for Israel, joining us now is our correspondent Jody Cohen from Ranana. Jody, thanks so much for joining us. Now, last night we heard the dissolution vote was going to be held next week. Now we're hearing it could be as early as tomorrow. What's the latest that you have for us? Yes, well, as you said, the coalition heads last night, that's Prime Minister Bennett and Foreign Minister Lapid, jointly announced their plan to voluntarily dissolve the Knesset, that's Israel's parliament, and said that a vote would be expected to take place next week. Now, overnight, we've heard that their plans could have changed and they may bring that vote to as early as tomorrow. That's Wednesday. Um, now, that would have to go through three votes, the legislative process. But if the coalition supports it, that could be done in as quickly as one day. Now, their aim in bringing that vote forward could be to potentially stop former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu from forming a government based on the previous election results. Now, how would that work? Right now, he's got a block of 55 MKs, members of the um, parliament, who would support him in forming a government. And he allegedly is doing his best to sway other members, individual parliamentarians from the coalition side, to come into his block. Now, Gideon Saar, the head of the New Hope Party, has already ruled that out. Um, it's not likely to happen. Right. I think if some people were to have swayed, that they would have moved already. However, we do know that some of the smaller and medium-sized parties are potentially facing not passing the electoral threshold. So perhaps one or two of them or more could be swayed. Right. Just to follow up to that, what will happen with the government in the interim, though the possible or as some would say likely election period? So Bennett will now become alternate prime minister and he's going to be holding 
um, what is called the Iran portfolio. And Lapid will now become the interim prime minister until the new government is sworn in. Now, that can take some time. We're hearing that um, the elections could be held possibly the end of October. The 25th of October has been uh, bandied about and suggested might happen earlier, but it could take some time. Um, he, in his remarks, thanked uh, former Prime Minister now Bennett, um, said that he has shown responsibility in the move and will stay, uh, no doubt, in Israeli leadership. So war words between those two leaders, but we've already seen that the political banter has already started on Twitter. As he said, uh, former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed the fall of what he called Israel's worst government. And we could be seeing a realignment, perhaps, of a new centre-right wing party. We've seen great trust between Bennett and Lapid, a great deal of cooperation. Ayelet Shaked, apparently, who's Bennett's partner for all these years, um, he, she knew that this announcement was going to be made. She wasn't consulted, which could perhaps indicate a realignment there. But of course, Likud is the largest party, so um, well, it remains to be seen what will happen going forward. Right, absolutely. Jody, thanks so much for all those insights. Thanks for joining us on We Honor This Hour. We Honor World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.